Hi guys, Curtis here from Halco, and today I'm gonna to run you through five lures that we think you definitely need to have in your tackle box to chase Australian salmon. Now first up, I'm gonna start with our leading surface lure, and that is the rooster popper. I've actually got two different sizes here. I've got the 80 mil size and the 105 mil size, and they're probably gonna be the two out of the whole rooster popper range that a salmon's gonna be most interested in. Uh, I'd say the 105 is going to be number one, but sometimes going down to a smaller profile lure can be the difference between no bites and a bite. So I would definitely have that 80 mil in the box, but I think it's going to be the 105 that I would tie on first. Now, the 105 weighs 30 grams, so it's a really good casting lure. Even when there's a bit of wind around, you can give these a really good rip. The other thing is poppers. It's probably the most exciting form of fishing that you can find. They're super visual, you can see your lure on the surface, which also means you can see the fish come up and nail it off the top. Poppers are a great option for kids as well because they can see the lure, it keeps them really interested in lure fishing and it's also really exciting for them to pop them along on the surface. And uh, that big cup face, that'll splash around, throw a lot of water around, create a really good noise imitating an injured bait fish and salmon absolutely love them. So number one is the rooster popper. Now number two, I'm going to go with a metal lure. There's a couple of metal lures in the five today, but number two is the outcast. And the outcast lures, they come in both a casting and a jigging form, but we're going to be talking about the casting form. And these are great for salmon off the beach. The thing about the outcast is it's our lure that casts the furthest. Even compared to the twisty that I'll talk about a bit later, it casts a little bit further. And that can be great when that school of salmon is sitting just outside your casting distance. I remember a time I was on the beach and uh, everyone had, you know, all the same salmon lures that everyone uses and sinking stick baits and stuff. I had an outcast and I could get that extra 10 meters, 20 meters of casting distance. And turns out when that school went and sat a bit further, I was the only one that could reach the school and I was the only one that caught a fish. So having that little bit of extra casting distance is a great option to have in your tackle box. They come in six colors. There's gold, white, blue, uh, redhead, green, and a fluoro color as well. And they come in 20, 40, 60, and 80 grams. I'd say you're most likely going to be looking at the 60 and 80 gram versions for the salmon, uh, especially off the shore. But the 40 gram and 20 gram will definitely get eaten out in the boat as well. So they are a good option to have. That is our second lure, the Outcast. Number three, I'm going to switch to a hybrid between a surface lure and a subsurface lure, and that is the Seagar. Now the Halco Seagar has been called a sinking stick bait, and I guess it does fall into that category because it is uh, a bibless minnow, but I would say it is more of a hybrid between a surface lure and a subsurface lure. It's actually similar to a popper, it's actually got a cupped face, and when that lure sits on the surface, it splashes and darts around uh, similar to a popper, but not quite as aggressively uh, imitating an injured bait fish. So it is a really good surface lure, but they are slow sinking. So you can also give it a pause, let it sink down, and then give the rod some nice sharp actions and it'll dart around underwater, similar to a sinking stick bait. So really versatile lure, the Seagar. Seagar comes in 12 colors. It's 120 mils long and it weighs 40 grams. So it's a, it's a really, really good casting lure as well. Um, you can rip them a long way, cover a lot of ground. So number three, the Seagar. Now number four, I would be absolutely mad to do this list without including a sinking stick bait. So I'm going to go with our Sly Dog 125. Out of all of them, this is probably the easiest lure to work. It's got a really effortless action. Sometimes you can even just point the rod at the lure, give it a slow wind and it gets a really, really nice side to side sort of wobble. Looks great in the water, great for kids as well because they're really easy to work. Good for people who haven't done a lot of stick baiting before. Um, they cast a long way, they're rear weighted so you can really rip them out a long way as well. Um, and you, they're great for that subsurface bite. If the fish aren't chewing on the surface, sometimes you'll get follows on surface lures and the fish won't quite commit to eating a lure off the surface. Switching to something subsurface, just get it a meter or so under the water, that can be the difference between getting a bite. They also, being that little bit bigger, they match the profile of something like a herring or a yellowtail if the salmon are feeding on uh, bait fish that are a little bit bigger as opposed to like your sardines or something smaller like that. Sly Dog comes in 11 colors and it weighs 52 grams. So another really good option, uh, slow sinking stick bait, that's the Sly Dog number four. And lastly, number five, I definitely could not finish off this list without my personal number one favorite salmon lure, 
and that is the Halco Twisty. Twisty is obviously a metal lure, and they come in a whole range of different weights, all the way from 1.5 grams, tiny little boys, all the way up to a big 70 gram, like this one here. Couple of different colors as well. There's the chrome option, like this full chrome. There's also the option to have red or green stickers, and uh, there's also a gold option too. So a couple of different options with the color, but the chrome is gonna be my go-to for the salmon, definitely. Now weight wise, you definitely have to match the weight to the situation that you're in. Probably likely to be a little bit heavier off the shore, a little bit lighter on the boat and etc. depending on your gear and your casting distance. But I think anywhere from that 20 gram to about the 55 gram is where you're gonna be looking for for salmon. Now one great bonus about using the smaller ones like the 20 gram is you don't count yourself out for smaller species of fish that are gonna be hanging around the same areas that you're fishing for your salmon. I love walking the beaches and casting 20 gram twisties for salmon and you'll catch plenty of herring and tailor and other little bits and pieces along the way that you wouldn't catch if you were using a large lure. So that's a great little bonus about using the twisty. Twisty is also a great option for kids as well. All you have to do is cast them as far as you can and then wind them straight in. There's no special rod movement that you need. They get a nice side to side wiggle, look like a bait fish uh, without any special action put through the rod. It's a great option for kids, really easy for them to use, easy for them to cast. And uh, if you end up snagging them up on the bottom and losing a few, they're probably the most uh, cost efficient way of doing that as well. So that's number five, the twisty, and that rounds off our top five lures that you need to have in your tackle box for this salmon season. It's really started to kick off now. All those fish have moved up from the southwest and we're even hearing some whispers of some in the metro area. So it's time to get a few lures in your box, get out there and do your best at catching a fish. We'll catch you next time. Hey guys, if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to drop it a like and also whack that subscribe button so to make sure you don't miss any more videos like this one.